60 or 70 people more that you have not met or lectured. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. we did the, um, the, the Perio lecture from your office, so yeah. uh, we haven't had the, all these people. Um, Majority of yeah. them, they're new now. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. So should I go through introduction? Yeah, please. Yeah. And then Mark as well. I wanted to introduce Mark, as, Mark too. Sure. Uh, so hello, everyone. Um, I hope my voice is clear and, and the, the, the video is clear. Uh, my name is uh, Asan Melati. I'm a periodontist in uh, private practice in Sydney, chats with Sydney. Uh, I've been uh, having the pleasure with working with uh, Vandana over the past few years and, and sort of been uh, uh, helping her in, in you know, with the, with the boss, with the perio components, uh, basically. So uh, it's good to be with you guys tonight and uh, hope we have a, a constructive and productive uh, webinar. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to get three people, three specialists together? Actually, it's not easy. I wanted more, but it's not easy. So thanks, Esan. Always giving up your life, your time. And uh, you're so dedicated to boss and education. So I really appreciate it. Sure. And then today we have Mark, Dr. Mark Atkinson for the first time, oral surgeon joining us. So can you introduce yourself? Mark, please. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Mark Atkinson. Uh, I'm a special oral surgeon. Um, I also operate in Sydney um, in the public hospital, uh, in private practice, and also I teach at the University of Sydney, the postgrads and the undergrads. Um, very excited to be invited here tonight to uh, work alongside Van Danner and uh, hopefully some private practice patients in the future as well. Um, she has the beautiful job of making patients' smiles beautiful and an oral surgeon, we're the most hated, but um, we work well alongside each other. So, um. <laughs> Thank you. You do the AIDS and all the, <laughs> the, the stuff that I say, I don't know, I don't know, speak to Mark, speak to, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what a great introduction. Thanks, guys. So I want to thank both of them to be, for being here. So what I thought about the format, we've done this before last year as well. I'm going to bring up some cases that I worked with Dr. Hassan, uh, then uh, Dr. Mark has a few cases as well that we work together. And we're just going to talk initially for about half an hour, 45 minutes and go through some interdisciplinary cases we've done. And we'll talk about various procedures as we go along with these cases, um, how I did them, the ortho side, the perio side, probably the surgical side, um, and make it very interactive. So um, I'll get the audio going so people can speak and ask questions, but you can always chat and ask, and I'll make sure um, that all questions are answered uh, by the end. So I'm just going to um, start with our uh, first um, case that I have. Uh, sorry, let me just um, find the case one sec. It was just there. And uh, in the meantime, if anybody has a question they've been wanting to ask, put it in the chat group so we don't forget. So I'm going to start with this case. It's just opening up. Um, sorry, one sec. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where's okay, no, here we go. Okay, guys, so I think you can see my screen now. You could probably see the presentation. If you don't, just uh, put your chat thing on and I'll have a look. So this is a case, a, a late teen, a 16-year-old girl who came to me, um, perfect, literally perfect class one occlusion, but she came with an impacted 4-3 and lack of space for um, that lower right canine. So that's her. Um, and you can tell from orthodontic perspective, she's mildly dolicofacial, but overall good smile aesthetics. Um, you can see how shifted the lower midline is, and um, that's because of space loss. So possibly there was an early extraction of a C, or most likely was actually, um, uh, you know, some sort of obstruction or, um, or even an early loss of B, maybe, the, the lower left lateral. Um, so what we have here uh, is like I can only see the um, the initial slide. Have you, have you gone through the pictures yet? Um, yeah, the picture is here. 
Can you not see the picture? All right. Yes. Yeah. No. Can you see now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now you can see my slides changing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we we're now seeing the 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 patient. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Okay. So um so you can see how drifted the midline is nearly a, a width of a lower incisor. So with a perfect class one occlusion, um and she obviously has a class three on this side. We have to create space, get the midlines aligned, um, and somehow get that canine up. Now, in a 16-year-old girl, I think it's unlikely spontaneous eruption might happen. So we kind of knew that once we created space, we may have to go the exposure way. Good news, as you can see, a lot of the lower impacted canines, they don't tend to be as angulated as uppers. So this was a really vertical impaction, which was really a nice um, angle for us to treat with the liners. So I won't go much into the ortho part of it because I have shown this case before. Um, and this will also go on your um, YouTube, actually. This will be on, on our YouTube channel soon. But I also built in some IPR here because how wide her laterals were and the amount we had to drift uh, that midline over. So not only we resorted to expansion, a bit of class three interarch elastic to push that midline over. It is a dental shift. So dental shifts are easier to treat in a growing child than a skeletal shift. Um, and you can see uh, this is our clear line of treatment, minimal attachments. I don't really like too many attachments. Uh, so you can see what we're trying to do is just push that midline over. That's our entire strategy and create space for 4-3. So we're six. Sure the, uh, slides are going across, Santana. They're not going across? Let me just change the internet one sec. Let me just change the internet. Can I just, uh, so could you see this uh, movie? Yeah. Can you see this movie now? Is that better? We can't see the movie, no. Maybe just change the slides. Um, not really showing the slide. Uh, look like the um, slide view. Uh, Maybe, yeah. Let me just actually go to share screen and do desktop. Let's see if desktop makes it easier. So now you're seeing my entire desktop. So can you see this um, power, uh, keynote now? Yeah. Yeah. You can see the movie? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So basically we're doing a huge shift, a huge shift. I think in an adult, this is not even possible without extractions. But because she's a late teen, um, third molars haven't erupted. And perhaps this is a case where third molar should be extracted because we're doing massive distalization to one side. So you can see this slide now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Okay. So what we see in six months, we get quite a lot of space for her four, three midlines are nearly coincident. If anything, can you see how in six months we pushed it bang right to almost her left side? Um, and all of that with interarch elastics. Her occlusion isn't bad now. Um, and so we obviously have to do some sort of revision. I won't go deeply into the notes. This is all my notes to the technician, by the way, to Invisalign. Uh, what I want to do with each revision, um, I make very detailed notes. So what we now need to do is continue this sort of space creation. And uh, while this was happening, Dr. Esan had done an exposure for us. So I have aligners going while there's exposure. So we're eight months in treatment, actually not here. This is where about eight months in treatment, the, the canine has not erupted at all spontaneously, which is what we expect. And then I send her to Dr. Esan Melati to do um, her exposure. And, you know, this was a difficult exposure, right? Can you talk about that, please? Because I know how we communicated a lot. We yeah. couldn't even really do any traction yeah. for a while because of how sore she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, generally the lower uh, um, impacted cases are, are more difficult surgically than the upper ones because we don't have as, as much uh, vestibule to, to play with. So, and, and especially in, in low, lower canines, lower premolars, we also have the concerns with the uh, the mental foramen, which in a, in a teenager is is in a fairly sort of uh, chronally located and not not really that deep into the vestibule. So, 
Um, here the challenge is uh, with these type of exposures, we prefer to, to retain a, a, at least a small uh, amount of carotenized tissue apical to the, to the exposed tooth, so that as the tooth sort of uh, uh, erupts them, that uh, carotenized tissue sort of follows the tooth and, and we don't end up with a tooth with a recession or a mucogingival problem. So here, um, the challenge was to try to, as you can see, I've, I've sort of uh, created a, like a U-shape uh, incision, uh, a, a crystal incision and two vertical releasing, which, which works perfectly in the upper ones, uh, but in the lower, it's very hard to, to stabilize that uh, in, the, in the vestibulum area. Um, so here I, I've sort of um, uh, had difficulty stabilizing it uh, in a way that we can keep a, a rim of tissue uh, apical to the impacted uh, exposed tooth, but at the same time, uh, or we'll stabilize it in a way that it doesn't sort of fold back over, over the tooth. So um, uh, my original plan was to do a, an open exposure, but as, as we later discussed, uh, because I was worried that this fold of tissue might sort of uh, um, uh, com come back and, and cover the tooth, so I put a, put a chain. Uh, and also um, did a bit of a laser trimming just to minimize the bleeding around the area because uh, if I wanted to do everything with scalpel, uh, it would have created a lot of bleeding and, and it's, it's hard to control the bleeding here um, effectively, really. Wow. Great. So thanks for that. So we ended up doing a close from memory. And I remember at least for a month, she was so sore. Um, finally, um, do you know, we basically got it up. You can see I've got a TPA. I stopped her lower aligners. Um, did I really need the TPA, to be honest? I don't think so, because I didn't really use it that much, to be honest. It just held the arch expansion, if anything. And um, she was still wearing upper aligners. Um, actually, it's not a TPA. It's a lingual arch, actually. Uh, TPA is it's a similar design, but in the upper arch. So we, we've got all this button attack going on. And she's obviously was using elastics to extrude this. Um, so it took four months nearly from the time of exposure to kind of get it up here. And we, again, see a bit of lack of space. So, um, you know, in her case, IPR is appropriate because even after so much um, moving of the dental midline, even after so much expansion, we still needed space to get that 4-3 up. Uh, but once you kind of get this much enamel showing, you know, with the liners, it's possible to extrude it all the way up, especially in teenagers. Extrusion is very difficult with the liners. There's about 30% shortfall. A case like this where you've got to extrude the tooth so many millimeters, it's almost like 70-80% shortfall. Um, but that's why you have to use auxiliaries. You have to use elastics. You've got to do something else. Otherwise, it, they will not come up. So we bring it up really well. Her smile aesthetics look quite nice. They're well maintained. Um, and that's her... Um, uh, look at the distance it's come. What is this? I like that uh, bone, like a trail, like... Zzz. What is it? What is that, Esan? Like the four three's got something apical there, like that little trail. It's like yeah, a that's, that's not not something that we see often actually. So that's that's quite impressive. Well, I have to add, if you go to the previous uh, slide, I have to okay. add that I'm actually quite impressed with the 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 the, the rim of carotenized tissue that was maintained. Uh, uh, in the cervical area of the four three, because I, I was worried that I had to sort of uh, remove most of it, and we may end up with you know mostly mucosa. But uh, that that small bit that I managed to to keep looks like that it's actually um, uh, probably sort of uh, you know uh, thickened up over over time as as the tooth was uh, was moving chronally, and and now we we can see a, a nice thick tissue, uh, although the tooth is still quite sort of. Uh, buccally positioned, but we, we don't see really much uh, recession happening because that uh, nice thick tissue is, is able to, yeah. to protect that. Yeah. yeah. But this is not the finish. So I obviously detailed it a bit more. And basically now what I'm doing is just again, changing some attachments, focusing on that canine, bit of IPR to get a bit more space, a um, bit more uprighting, a bit more expansion, see the upper arch coming out a bit. So just kind of creating more space. So that's 17 months in treatment. We've got it up a bit more. You can see the gingiva looking a lot nicer here, Esan, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly. Looking, yeah, it's looking, it's still thick. It's quite thick there. Mm. So midlines are coincident almost. 
and then we basically do final refinement. I love revisions, by the way. A lot of dentists say to me, oh, I have to do two revisions. I go, I do five or six in many of my cases. The more revisions, the better, because I'm constantly making their treatments almost um, as ideal a finish as I can. So it's like you would change four or five arch wires in a case. I change plastic four or five times. So, um, so that's uh, her very last revision. You can see all I'm doing is fine tuning. I'm just basically getting everything set up as ideal as possible um, in all the right angulations, tips. There's not a lot of major movements here. A um, bit more IPR just to get that three tucked in a, lo a lot better. So this is the final result here. And that's 21 months in treatment. To be honest, two or three months, we waited for the canine to erupt. If I had gone for exposure a bit earlier, we would have finished maybe even under uh, maybe 18 months. So, um, so that's um, not bad with aligners.